How's it going everyone? Today we're gonna to be talking about solar. And solar has grown in popularity and demand like crazy in the past five to 10 years. And it actually makes up 5% of the total global electric generation. But is this ever going to be enough to sustain us and actually solve our energy demand problem? Let's go ahead and dive a little deeper. So solar has come a long way from going from a expensive science experiment that was really only used in absolutely necessary cases like space when you're in a satellite and there are no other resources around to today it's used in residential homes, people have little fun projects they make with it on top of their RVs, it's everywhere today. But there's one thing that's common and it's that most of the time it's not 100% solar powered. It's typically tied to the grid where you use other sources of power as well. So what would it take to get us all the way to 100% solar without any other needs? And this brings me to the three main points of this video and the three things that we're gonna have to get past in order for solar to actually work. But the first thing and the most important thing is that the sun doesn't always stay around. Well, the sun stays around, but we don't stay around. We turn our backs to the sun every single day and we lose all that sunlight. So how are we gonna be able to capture the sunlight for later usage? And batteries is obviously the biggest answer here. Batteries are well used everywhere in the world today. With EVs coming up, there are huge batteries being used. That kind of technology is already there, it's just not implemented all around. But let's go ahead and assume every single house, every single building has its own battery pack, so that way it can be powered at night and you can store the electricity you get during the day. Is that electricity you even generate during the day enough? Let's go ahead and go to my second point here, and this is all about surface area. Solar is completely reliant on the amount of surface area your panel is. The sun only dumps so much energy on the earth each day. It is a ton of energy, but you can only get that energy and use it if you can capture it. So you can imagine the bigger the net we have, the more we can capture. But it doesn't matter how efficient your panel is it can only capture so much because the sun only puts out so much energy every time it is throwing energy onto the earth. So in the United States, we use on average 11.1 billion kilowatt hours per day of electricity. First, let's find out how much area of solar we would need to generate the 11.1 billion kilowatt hours a day that we use currently. For this, we need to assume a few things. Average panel efficiency, we're gonna go with 20%. We're also gonna go ahead and assume it's only six hours of sunlight generation a day. So a 400 watt panel, for example, at 20% efficiency would only give us 80 watts of power. If you multiply that by six hours in the day, we would get 480 watt hours a day. Now we need kilowatt hours here, so just go ahead and divide that by a thousand. So that would be 0.48 kilowatt hours, roughly half a kilowatt hour for the entire day from one panel. Now remember, we need 11.1 billion kilowatt hours, that's with a B, and one panel gives us about half a kilowatt hour every single day. So now we can do simple division to find out how many of those panels we would need, and that is roughly 23,125,000,000 panels in order to generate that electricity for us. And if we take an average solar panel to six feet by three and a half feet long, that would require 17,400 square miles of area. And that sounds like a lot, and it is a lot of space, but considering we have 50 states here, we could divide that state by state, and that only is 350 square miles per state. Here is a desert plot of land in Texas. I use this because the streets were roughly forming a square and this area was 22 miles by 33 miles or 726 square miles. Now that's actually twice the space you would need for the state and there's plenty other land out there that's not even being used. And this is also assuming that 100% of the solar is in fields, but that's not actually the case. There's plenty of real estate that we can put solar that is not in fields. For example, there's this hospital in Florida that they actually use solar on and they could have even gone further and put this over the parking lot as well. Now, speaking of parking lots, that is also a huge opportunity to put solar. Not only do you get shade for your car, but you also get to produce electricity and everyone wins. Let's go ahead and have a little more fun and see how many parking lots we have and how much it would take to cover all of those and see how much extra square footage we can get. Again, realizing this doesn't require any fields and this is space that's already used and can still be used the exact same way, except now it'll generate electricity. So in the US, there's an average estimate about 13,778 square miles of parking lots that we could be using. That alone will cover nearly 80% of the surface area we require for solar to generate electricity. And we haven't even gotten to houses yet. There are about 145 million homes in the US with an average roof size of 1,700 square feet. That would bring us to about 8,800 more square miles that we could put solar on top of. 
So clearly surface area isn't that big of a deal when you actually spread it out. And with more efficient panels coming along, that actually lowers the amount of surface area that you need because each panel is now producing more per square foot. So we can sit here all day talking about how many solar panels we need, how big they are, how awesome they are, how much square footage we have. But in the end, in the real world, it doesn't work that way and everything has cost. And solar panels, unfortunately, are still not super cheap to get. It takes about nine to 12 years on average now to recoup the cost it took to actually pay for the solar to be put in in the first place. If you're a government or a big business, yeah, this is a pretty easy spend. You know you're gonna be around that long anyway, so it makes sense to do it. But small individuals and small businesses, a lot of times can't afford this hit. But luckily with all technology, the more people use it, the cheaper it gets, and the cheaper it gets, the more people end up using it and adopting it and actually are open to it. So this is a vicious cycle and it will get better, better, and better over time. And we actually have some data to prove that, so let's go back to some fun numbers. So back in 2002, on average, it was $12.20 per watt of power of solar you could install. Fast forward 20 years later, and it was all the way down to $3.82 per watt. That's a huge drop. That is 60% the first 10 years, and then another 40% down the next 10 years. And with the the exponential growth we've seen in solar, not to mention if a new technology gets developed, we could see this even cheaper in 2030. So that only leaves us with one more question. Are you planning to get solar? And do you think I missed any hurdles that we have to overcome first before that'll be a viable option? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching this video. I'll see you all in the next one.